Hi, everyone. Um, thank you all so much for joining us. Good evening. Welcome to the grand finale of our Hulu Comedy Day, which is also uh, the finale of the fifth edition of our USC Comedy Festival. Uh, I'm Alex Zago, Director of Programming at the USC School of Cinematic Arts. And uh, we've had such an amazing weekend that I just wanted to thank my Comedy Festival colleagues, Barnett Kelman, David Isaacs, Jack Epps, Wayne Fetterman, JD Connor, Justin Wilson, Brian DeAngelis, Jillian Ruvalcaba, Stacey Kravitz, and Kristen Barella, as well as Dan Wolf, Stan Jaros, Amelia Eichler, Andrew Leist, and Patrick Gilogo from our Projection Services Department. I'd also like to thank USC Visions and Voices, the Arts and Humanities Initiative, as well as Hulu for all of their enthusiasm and support, particularly from Lauren Burnett, Candace Ashton, Ashton Kelly Sheets, Lauren Thorpe, Morgan Epperson, and Yasemin Azarkash, uh, Azarax, sorry. Um, tonight's panel, From Pitch to Peabody, features Billy Rosenberg, Vice President of Hulu Originals and Head of Comedy, and Rami Youssef, the creator and star of Hulu's Rami, and will be moderated by Dina Nasser Fernandez, Program Director of our Middle East Media Initiative at the School of Cinematic Arts. Thanks, Alex. As Alex said, I'm Barnett Kelman, co-director along with David Isaacs and Jack Epps of USC Comedy, which is a program we started at the School of Cinematic Arts in 2011 to bring attention to the art of comedy and encourage filmmakers to take advantage of the incredible opportunities humor offers for their storytelling. At USC Comedy, students work with award-winning faculty and alumni, getting mentorship and instruction in history and theory as well as writing, directing, and all aspects of producing comedy. To our students in the audience, I wanna say it's enrollment time. If you're interested in writing, directing, producing comedic content, or just a fan of the form, USC Comedy offers a rich curriculum designed to help you discover, develop, and enhance your comedic voice. And we also offer a comedy minor. So be sure to check out our comedy courses for fall. You can find them on the USC Comedy webpage on the SCA website. We could never have created this first of a kind university program without the vision and support of Dean Elizabeth Daly of the School of Cinematic Arts. Thank you, Dean Daly. And before we begin this last and truly capstone event of the USC Comedy Festival, I wanna thank Alex Ago, SCA's Director of Programming for producing this astounding weekend. No one but Alex could have pulled this off and we're all enormously grateful. Thanks to my partners, David Isaacs and Jack Epps, and the team that has worked all year to make it happen, Professors J.D. Connor and Wayne Fetterman, Justin Wilson and Brian DeAngelis, our Oki Comedy Fellow, and a crack squad of student volunteers. Thanks to Visions and Voices, and thanks to Hulu for the opportunity to explore their great comedy programming. And now on to Rami from Pitch to Peabody. The Peabody Award was created to honor, and I quote, the most powerful, enlightening, and invigorating stories in television, radio, and online media. And I can think of no better description than that for Rami, the series that received the 2020 Peabody Award. Rami is, of course, the brainchild of Rami Youssef. He's its creator, executive producer, director, and star. The series is based on his experience as a first generation Egyptian Muslim American. And in it, he gives us the humorous reality of a young man living in New Jersey, even as he tackles the taboos and stereotypes that imprison us all. The show is done with an honesty, integrity, and fearless humor rare in any medium. And in case you can't tell, I'm a big fan. And joining us is Hulu's head of comedy, USC cinema alumnus, Billy Rosenberg. Speaking of rare, to find a studio or network executive who not only welcomed a pitch like Rami, but stayed the course to see it realized so successfully, that's rare. Billy, we are very proud to call you one of ours and excited to have you here today. Leading our discussion with Rami and Billy is Dina Nassar Fernandez, the program of SEA's Middle East Media Initiative. And before we turn this over to Dina, Rami and Billy, Let's watch the premiere of season two of the series, Rami. Hello. Awesome. What's up, Ram? Oh my God, so exciting. Okay, 
Thank you, um, everybody in the audience. Um, we'll be taking questions later um, after the Q&A. I wanted to, up top, just introduce our guests. Um, Billy Rosenberg, he is the head of comedy at Hulu. And Rami Youssef, a comedian, writer, director, showrunner, and star of the award-winning show on Hulu, Rami. And I feel like I have to say a mashallah after that. <laughs> Good Quite to see a you, Dina. Good beautiful to see you. list of accomplishments. We're super proud over here. Um, so I want to start with Billy so that we can just mm -hmm. set the stage. Um, Billy, you were hired by Hulu in 2017 to build the comedy slate. And I just I'm curious because 2017, hmm, what was going on then? Just some kind of crazy shifts in our country. Um, I'm curious to know um, when you took that job, um, you know, you were tasked with building the comedy slate at Hulu. Um, how, what did you see as your sort of like first goal or like how did, yeah. you, how did you approach the job? Yeah, sure. Um, first, I just want to say I'm really excited to be here. I'm a graduate of the USC undergraduate film school, and it brings me just so much pride to be invited to come back and talk about my work. Uh, and just to thank Dean Daly, Alex, and the whole USC team behind the festival. Um, yeah, so Dina, great question. No, you went to film school? <laughs> I know, it's shocking. <laughs> oh, shit. Did you like make a thesis film and stuff? No, I was film theory. So oh, I, just, okay. I got to watch movies for education, which is okay. great. <laughs> you made a thesis film. I was going to dig that shit up. <laughs> I do. I, there may be one or two. I'll show you later. I was going to find it. <laughs> uh, but yeah, before I started at Hulu, I was working as a film and TV producer for over a decade. And um, I had never been on the programming or network side before. And while I had my hand in kind of helping production companies build slates. I'd never done it on this side. And in, in 2017, when I started at Hulu, you know, we were just about to launch The Handmaid's Tale and everyone felt really excited about it. And we had a good feeling it was going to be a huge hit. But on the comedy side, we were kind of on the twilight years of some of our first original comedy shows. Mm -hmm. And they were basically looking for me and my team to build a new a slate from scratch. And, um, it was also, you know, the beginning of the streaming TV boom, which means that everyone was making original shows. And um, I was just really looking for shows that would stand out and feel unique and premium and grab people's attention. And for me as a viewer, the shows that I really got excited about and do get excited about are, are things that feel fresh and funny. And, and the things that I would tell my friends, you know, you got to watch the show. And I think in a, a crowded marketplace, you kind of need that a little bit. And, you know, the other thing that you were alluding to, Dina, was that when I first started at Hulu, it was the first week of the Trump presidency. And so um, that really did inform, you know, it was what was happening in the world, what I was feeling personally, and it influenced the kind of shows that I wanted to program um, as a reaction to, to the presidency. And, um, and so, yeah, and one of my first goals was also just to call all my friends and producers and people that I knew who made great content. And I remember calling Ravi Nandan, who he runs A24 television mm. and is an accomplished producer in his own right. And I asked him what he's working on and what he could be bringing me. And he mentioned that he's working on a show with Rami and uh, we're going to be setting pitches soon. So um, that was sort of my first month in the job. Yeah, and I, I, I asked that question because with Shrill and Pen15 and Rami, I think it's like sort of obvious that, that you know, you had a very um, uh, like conscious um, ob objective there to, you know, do your best with representation and to show, like you said, new and fresh stories that haven't been seen before. Yeah, and I think yeah. that at that time artists had a lot to say too. I mean, they still do, but I think it, there was definitely a feeling of, okay, you know, I want to talk, there's things I want to talk about and it's my time to talk about it. And I think it was really exciting because there were so many great projects being brought in that from really incredible creators that had a real voice and Rami's was one of them. Right. So then Rami, tell me about your pitch meetings, your early pitch meetings with Billy. Um, 
Well, yeah, when we first came in to talk about the show, it was, it was, you know, we were pitching the show at the time. Like, I think Billy, you had probably seen, I had this like 45 minute laugh factory tape. Mm -hmm. And so it was kind of like, we had this, you know, this, this, this stand up that was kind of like, here's the point of view. And it was kind of like the building blocks and a lot of that stuff. A lot of those bits are kind of littered throughout the first season. And then obviously we built like a lot of episodes around them and stuff. So we kind of had that, we came in, we really talked about the kind of show, the kind of world that we really wanted to make. Um, and, and it was also, I think just like my first couple meetings with Billy were, um, you know, I think, I think he got the show immediately, which was really cool uh, and, and understood the kind of family we were trying to show on TV, the kind of point of view we wanted to do. And then I think a lot of it was about you know, building something new, like he was saying. And, 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 and it was kind of this thing where, you know, I, I do remember Handmaids hadn't been out. And so it was like, it, it, it was just like, okay, so it's like us and like Mindy Project reruns and like, like what's happening over here? Like, I don't know what, what's the vision, you know? And, and Billy was just really thoughtful about, um, this is what I'm trying to do. And I want you to be one of the first um, pieces of it as we build this out. And, and um yeah, which this doesn't happen often, but it was like pretty much everything he talked about did happen over the course of like a couple of years. And it was really, really cool. And that's that's a very hard thing to do, I think, anywhere, but especially in Hollywood. Uh, so it was, it was really um, it, it was an, an exciting opportunity for us. We had other offers, but it just felt like we could be somewhere that really um, wanted us and needed us, I think, was was really kind of a nice. Um, yeah, it felt, felt like a nice partnership. Yeah, right. and it worked both ways. I mean, I feel like you know, also just as Rami was saying, it's like, we had a clean slate, we needed stuff and his show came in and it was instantly, we realized it was something special. And, you know, just to be able to, to kind of create a slate off a show like Rami's was a really big opportunity for us. And, you know, I remember you and I had uh, drinks. We, we had like, after we met, you pitched the show and then you were kind of considering your options. There's a bunch of other suitors. And I remember we, we made a drink plan and then we sat down for drinks and I was like, what do you want to order? And you're like, I don't, I don't drink. And I was like, oh yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> and then, uh, and then you had a mocktail and we, we had drinks and then you basically, I don't, it felt like we were we were like, it was like a first date in some ways, but it was like, are we going to do this together? And it was, it was just like a leap of faith that we took with each other. And it was a really special moment. I'll never forget that. And I don't know. I'll never forget it either. Cause I remember too, kind of being like, yo, are you going to let us get into some shit? Like, can we just make this thing we want to make? And he was like, yeah. And then I remember sending in some of these early scripts and I was like, ah, oh, they're going to push back. They're going to whatever. And then like the notes we would get would only be like story notes. And I'd be like, really, you're going to let us like, you're going to let this character say this thing. Like it was, it was all very like shocking and exciting, you know? Yeah. Um, so then, um, okay, so then let's talk a little bit about the development process. Mm -hmm. Can you guys talk a little bit about what that looks like? Yeah, I mean, I think when we heard, uh, just a little bit more back backtracking on the pitch yeah. a little bit, and then I'll go in the development process, like, because I think it all kind of ties in together. You know, when Rami came in with the pitch, he, his vision was very clear, and he was like, look, I want this show... I feel like I'm the hyphen and I, this is just what I remember you saying, right? Yeah, yeah. So just correct me if I'm wrong, yeah. but uh, he's like, I, I feel like I'm the hyphen and, and Muslim American. I'm not sure, you know, he doesn't fit in in either space. He's, it's a coming of age story. We kind of really felt like the highly relatable themes of family, faith and identity. And we just, you know, when it came to development, I think we just wanted to maintain that and make sure that that vision was intact. And I just, I, the other thing I remember about the pitch and why we kind of came in so strong about it was Rami is just one of the most charismatic people I've ever met in my entire life. And I think that's probably why in his show, he makes his character do such horrible things because he like get away with it. Um, but I just remember telling Craig, my boss at the time that I just met this comic Rami, this show is amazing. He's so winning and charming. You're going to love him. And he's like, he's like the Muslim Justin Bieber. <laughs> is how I phrased you. <laughs> so I don't know if you ever knew I, I called you that, but no, uh, huge compliment. I mean, I mean come <laughs> on, I love beef. I don't know if you can sing at all, but I just I, <laughs> I, I just remember 
<laughs> like being just so wowed by your talents and being like, okay, <laughs> let's, let's make this show. Um, and then the development process, uh, Rami, you want to handle that a little bit? Or <laughs> well, I mean, it, it, it was really, I think it was really smart the, the way that we were able to, I, I do think, yeah, that was like kind of a, a big building block of the initial pitch was talking about, you know, um, straddling these worlds. And I think, you know, throughout the development of the show, it's been interesting because I think that that set up our character well, but then it kind of allowed us to like get into other things. Um, you know, obviously we really track the spiritual journey and obviously we get into, you know, other character stories. And 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 I think like what, what was really cool in development was finding this balance between, okay, there is this um, core, you know, hyphenated experience that a lot of people have. We want to anchor that. But part of development, which was cool, was kind of as we were taking risks, which was like, wait, is Rami really not going to be in three episodes in the first season? Yeah. Is like, is this going to happen this way? And like, we kind of started to like find the language of the show together. Um, and, and that was just like a really cool process, especially because I mean, it's, it's interesting. I think with this show, there's been this feeling where I'm like, oh man, like no one's watching us. Like we get to kind of just like mess around and like, and, and, and make something really cool. And, and I think, you know, our relationship, um, myself and Billy and, 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 and Rob and Elena and, 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 and Beatrice at the time that we were developing with, it was really, um, I, I've always been very humbled and impressed by that. Like, they were always just giving notes to push the show towards what the show should be. Like, I never felt like they were trying to make the show something it wasn't. It was more like, hey, you told us this is what you want to do. So like, can you like push it a little bit further to the thing you told us you wanted to do? And, and that, that's been really cool. So how much of the show did you have already like conceptually or like when you, when you came to Hulu, how much of it was already sort of like either outlined or written? Well, it was, it was more like, everything built off that stand up was just kind of like, I think we knew the point of view pretty solid, which was really fun. Like we kind of knew how all the characters felt, you know, we had our core family. We knew things that we wanted to explore in our first season. Like we knew definitely in the realm of dating in the realm of faith in the realm of like trying to connect all that stuff. I think in the, in the pitch, we talked about going to Cairo. We talked about, you know, what it would look like to see a Ramadan episode. We talked about like really delving into, you know, what this family is trying to hold on to. Um, and, and I think we did talk about the spiritual element of, you know, there's, you know, who you want to be, and then there's who you who you actually are, and like really trying to fill that gap. So so a lot of that framing was really there, but we hadn't written the pilot yet. And, and, and I think, you know, we, we knew I had certain ideas, like we, we had a middle school episode, the 9-11 episode that we did, that was an idea that I had had for a movie. But you know, I was like, man, if I get a chance to make something like that's going in the season. And, and I'm pretty sure we had talked about um, in the pitch, even that, that we would want to see something like that, um, you know, uh, mixed format, kind of different, different point of view and that kind of thing. So, so it, I, I do think the pitch had a lot of what the show was. And then obviously we found a lot of the show as we were making it too. Right. I mean, it sounds like a pretty unique approach, Billy, uh, to development. Mm -hmm. Um, can you speak to that? Is that, um, is yeah. that standard the, or is this something unique to Hulu I mean, or to I think, Billy? I think every show is kind of unique and of its own. Um, and it just depends on who the person is, what they're coming in with and how the process is evolving. You know, with Rami, it was pretty clear, even in the pitch stage, how, how good the show in his head is, like, which is rare. Because I think typically when you hear pitches, if they, do, if they don't, we've been hearing a lot of pitches at that point and, and a lot of them were inauthentic or didn't have, they had good ideas, but they weren't clearly articulated. And Rami's was both hilariously funny, but also thought provoking and it, it just felt completely original. And so, you know, typically off of pitch from an unknown creator, we don't typically make a big sort of financial commitment out the gate. And we uh, we ordered a pilot like straight, you know, in the in the pitch phase, which um, which just spoke to how much we thought Rami knew his show uh, was was realized. But then as we were working on it, we'd get in scripts and the scripts were phenomenal. They were so well on the, they were so well written on the page. And then to his point, like we didn't have to get a lot of notes because it didn't need it. Like it was really well realized and um, and then he'd talk about his season pitch out and 
the season pitch out was fully baked too. And it was just like each episode, like he was saying the 9-11 episode or, you know, an Uncle Nassim episode, every episode was so funny and original, unique. And we just, we just had confidence in him because he had confidence in himself. And it, it really just, it was an organic process of, of just building trust in sort of the early creative stages that just, it felt right. And, you know, he also was surrounded for somebody who's so young and at that point, fairly not experienced making a TV show. He was surrounded by really experienced people. So he had, you know, Ravi, who I'd mentioned, and Hallie at A24 as producers. He had Gerard Carmichael kind of vouching for him, giving him his blessing as a producer. And he also had um, Bridget Bedard, a showrunner from Transparent, who helped him on season one. So he had this team of people supporting him and allowing him to kind of fill and, and kind of slowly step into the role of creator showrunner in a way that felt organic and seamless so that midway through the season, it's like he was, you know, he knew the show, he, he had it all figured out and it was, there was never really any major issues. Like it was just pretty, we were always kind of creatively aligned, which is a good sign that, you know, you're both making the same show. Yeah, for sure. So then Rami, talk to me a little bit about show running because this was your first time in that role. Um, and, you know, there's a learning curve there for sure. So how, what did you do to prepare yourself um, and, and did you enjoy it? Um, well, season one, like Billy was saying, we had Bridget uh, Bedard, who, who, was, who was essentially kind of like co-show running with me and kind of really helping me. You know, I think on a show like this, yeah, it's like the, the you know, I think like creator driven shows where it is so kind of like semi-autobiographical. It's like, you know, um, the creator always kind of has a voice that in, 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 in the final decision making. But I think what was really great about starting the show off with Bridget was she, you know, part of our choice with her was that she had come from the transparent world. Um, so we kind of knew, okay, she's used to making unconventional TV feel still cogent, you know, like we were kind of really trying to straddle that line between like, how do we make something that um, feels unique, but also doesn't just feel like it's like obscure French film or something like we still want it to feel like, you know, and, and my whole thesis kind of, whether it be with stand up or, or, or making TV, even before I had made the show, um, you know, I was kind of very in touch with what I liked and, 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 and I, and my, my overarching thought was like, how do you make something feel weird and, and and what's that line of like weird but still a pop song and and maybe that is speaking to the uh the the Bieber in me but like like how how do we how do we get weird how do we get specific but it's still pop and and so kind of cracking that um format together uh as a room and and with my co-creators Ari and Ryan who who really um were just so instrumental to like a lot of the framing that that we made kind of going into the show um like Billy was saying, it's like the more you write the scripts and the more stuff comes in, it was the more that like my barometer for, oh, I like that and I don't like that um, became really clear because at a certain point, especially when you're in writer's rooms with very, like a ton of talented people, there are a lot of good ideas. Like you, and you start to understand that like making something isn't really about ideas. It's, it, 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 there are ideas, but it's more like what ideas make it to the screen or make it to the page? What's the filter? And then like, what's the rhythm that those ideas are run through? And, and that's where you're really kind of making the voice of what it is. And I think the thing that surprised me was I realized that was actually very similar to stand up, you know, because stand up, there's a bunch of people who have dating jokes or who have great ideas. But what do you sound like when you say it? And what part of it are you zoning in on? And, and what part of this experience is interesting? And, and so in terms of like in general representation, it's why I think there can be 30 shows about black families, 30 shows about Muslim families, because everyone's going to focus on a different part and everyone can kind of make it feel really singular. And so I think that first season um, was really cool because I was able to kind of say, oh, okay, these are the things that I like focusing on and this is how I like saying it. And then getting to step it out even more in the second season. And then now we're making the third season and Funnily enough, now I feel like, oh, now I really know how to make the show. You know, like the first two, it's like, you're kind of like struggling. You're like, oh, wait, it's this, this, is it that, is it, you know? And it's like, you know, in terms of your question of like, did I enjoy it? I mean, I don't know. It's like, it's, it's, it's like, kind of, I mean, it's, it's, you know, you yeah, enjoy I it mean, done, you know, but, but it's very stressful. It's, it's like a form of, 
you know, creative childbirth or something. I, I think everyone's happy to have a kid. No one's like, oh, labor is dope. You know, like, I don't think that that's like anyone's, you know, uh, review of something like that. But um, it, it is really fun to expand, but probably more so retroactively than while it's happening all the time. <laughs> yeah. And it sounds like what you're saying is that um, you just, you're, you're getting better at it as you're doing it. Um, which, you know, I think does speak a little bit to, you know, your vision is getting clearer, like you said. And, um, and so, yeah, I'm excited about season three. Um, can you guys, you guys can't tell us anything about season three, I'm guessing. I mean, <laughs> I mean, you got a spoiler? Any... <laughs> I mean, spo <laughs> there, there's no, there's no like spoilers. I, I, and I specifically want to get into, but I think like, you know, it, it's just, um, you know, we, what's really been fun with the show and what I, I can't believe, you know, we've been allowed to do. I mean, I just logged onto the zoom towards the end of the, the episode that was just airing. And I'm like, Oh, it's so dope. We got to do like, we like that episode ends on like a nine minute scene or something. I'm like, I'm so ha like, it's so fun to be able to play. And I think something that's been really cool is that like our show, I think feels very cogent and it feels like, you know, the same show throughout. And at the same time, we've gotten to explore different tones and we've gotten to play with different ways to tell it. And, and so I think like, you know, something that just even going into season three, um, I'm excited that that's even going to be like, just even more expanded. And, and, and I just think that we're going to see, um, you know, I, in terms of spoilers, I can just say like the show is going to be really fun. It's going to be really international this year. We're going to see a lot, uh, you know, we've seen a, this family with a lot of secrets. We're going to see a lot of those secrets kind of be out in the open. And we're going to see a lot of, a lot of messiness in the way that I think the show does uh, well, but, but in, in a way that I think will be even just even more fun. And so I'm uh, yeah, very excited. And just in terms of like development flow, it, it, it's been really fun. Um, you know, which is, uh, and I swear it's, it's, it's hard to like, like, you know, it's hard to reach a point like this, but we'll get like notes and I'm like excited kind of, I'm like, Oh cool. What did you guys think? Because we're, we're, we're so clearly making the same thing. And so it's like, I don't like, I'm not like reading notes to be like, uh, there are other things I've worked on, you know, since, or, or, you know, other experiences, even just as a writer, when you're coming up and you get notes and you're like, this person doesn't get what I'm talking about. Right. Um, but we're, we're in, I think a good flow because we've made 20 episodes where it's like even more so when we're talking, you know, notes, we're talking those things. It's kind of like, um, it just becomes exciting because it's like it's getting better and it's becoming more of what it needs to be. Right. And I have to say, I mean, to your credit, Billy, that's really, you know, impressive because it is such a culturally and religiously specific show. Mm -hmm. um, I like, you know, and sometimes I'm like watching the episodes. I'm like, uh, you know, I, I think like, did Rami have to explain that? To, like the, when this when this scene happened yeah. was there a conversation i would be what is the conversation? there's definitely moments where i'd had to call rami to be like explain this but i definitely tried to there was a lot of things i didn't understand and still right. don't and i think every time i read a script or an outline i always have google up and i i'm googling things left and right so i don't have to be that embarrassing person who asks him what, <laughs> what does so and so mean yeah, um, and, but some things like the toe, like washing in between the toe. I mean, I don't yeah. think, you know, people would expect you to <laughs> necessarily understand, you know, the nuances well, of that. That's an interesting scene to, to zone in on because I do yeah. think that was like a big creative conversation we had. Yeah. Like, I think that that was one where if there was ever a thing that we had different opinions on, it was like, that how was should it. the show open? And I wanted the show to open on the toe washing and Hulu was like, we'd like it to open on like the scene with Rami and his mom in the car outside the mosque. And this was like kind of like a big thing. And it's so funny actually, because Ravi texted me randomly like three days ago, because I really was like, let's start on the fucking toe, like fuck this. And I really wanted to start on the toe. And Ravi texted me like three days ago and he was like, hey, do you regret like not starting on the toe? And I was like, nah, I don't. Like, <laughs> I was like, I was like, nah, it's cool. Like I, well, I, I, I even remember there was something even more behind that, which was, you know, we loved the pilot. It was so good. And we thought it was creatively excellent and totally a pure, a pure creative vision of Rami's part. But something that we do it from a, at as a business is that we tend to occasionally test pilot episodes. So we, and by testing, that means like there's a, a test market. Like there's a group of people who watch the show and they, they tell you like how engaged they are at a given moment. And we, you know, we typically don't take that information 
it's it's like more just an input. It's not something that really affects how we give notes or or how we kind of how we kind of drive creative. But you know, it's the first episode, and there's also data internally that shows that like if you don't hook audiences in in the first two minutes of an episode, you'll they'll never come back to the episode. Mm-hmm. And what the the testing was telling us was that oh, starting with the foot washing is like half your audience is going to leave. And what Rami said to us, which I thought was really smart, he pushed back and he said, look, um, it has to start with the mosque scene and the audience that's leaving, we don't need them. The show is not for them, but there will be another more dedicated audience that will find the show and be obsessed with it. And it will be their favorite show. And, and I, I, there were, cause there was even another version where we, we start with like the wedding and then we go to to the mosque after i don't know if you remember that yeah and we we decided to keep the mosque as like i guess the second scene but it's kind of still the first scene well there was there was i think there was this yeah the there was a couple of versions there was one version too that we talked about which like started with me and there's this scene in the pilot where it's like i'm lying to my girlfriend you know and and yeah and oh, like yeah. we start with that and 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 that was like these were really cool conversations because it was like we, we talked about why that wouldn't be a good idea because it's a scene where I'm kind of telling a lie and she's right. Mm-hmm. And I mean, speaking to what like Billy was saying earlier, like I, I do like kind of putting my character in these situations, but, but we kind of felt like, opening up on this, like from a purely psychological standpoint, we're like, okay, opening up on this show where this Arab Muslim dude is lying and, 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 and his white girlfriend is like, you lied to me and she's right puts everything in such a strange framing as opposed to if you see him do that after like three scenes and you already like him, then you're like, okay, well, this is our hero. And so there was this, all this stuff. And, and, and part of the testing stuff too, is even like, and this is the kind of stuff that's um, that I think speaks to like American audience stuff where it's like, even because that foot washing scene is like all in Arabic where there were a bunch of people who were testing it that didn't think it was a comedy. Yeah. They thought yeah it was that's like, right. They, they, they were like, what genre do you think this show is? And they thought it was like Homeland or 24 or something. <laughs> they thought it was just like this war drama. And then they were like, oh, by the time we got to the wedding and the date, we realized it was a comedy. But it was like eight minutes where they thought it was about war for no reason other than they heard a call to prayer and they heard Arabic because that's the only context that they'd seen that stuff. And so we actually wrote the scene of me and my mom outside the mosque as a way to kind of um, bridge, you know, the the um the realities right because so so it, it and i do think in terms of just like collaborating together to you know uh, how do you keep something authentic how do you keep something in the vision and then how do you also use some of this data even though like obviously they weren't not picking up the show based on the data i remember i remember we got the testing and it was like yeah, people, don't, but that's like everything, like everything good doesn't test well. Like, I don't think Atlanta tests well. I don't think any, like no, no show. Cause the testing is like, it's like random people in Vegas. They pull out like from a slot machine. Yeah. Like, a majority of the people would probably never watch the show anyway. So it's, yeah, like, it's like, we don't even, we don't care as much, but it was, it yeah. was like that input being like, okay, is this how we should start it or not? But at the end of the day, we could, yeah, you, you kind of wrote this new scene with the mom and then, but, but we really, we did, we kept it at the mosque. And I, honestly, it's the best decision you know, yeah. trusting you and kind of just going with it because you were so right because, you know, people did find the show and it didn't matter if those small percentage of people dropped off because a whole new wave of people came in later once word of mouth came out about the show being amazing. And, and, and to like an interesting thing about that, even to talk development process, you mm-hmm. know, season one, we shot, um, well, it's, it's interesting. We shot a pilot and then we, went into the writer's room for a year and then we shot the rest of the season. And then when we put everything together, we had like three days where we went to get pickups for the season. And on a real, real technical level, that scene with the mom was the very last scene that we shot of like two years worth of making the show. Like, I don't know if you remember that Billy, but it was like the last scene on the last day of pickups where we finally figured out the scene to open the pilot. So it was this like, you know, ongoing process of like, what's going to open the show best, you know, and we tried, there was one scene we tried, I remember there was like me on the phone on the way to the mop, like, there was a couple things that we had tried. Mm -hmm. Um, And so it was, it was, um, and sometimes you need the whole season to kind of figure out, okay, what's the first thing going to be. And that became something where we were like, oh, we really love this dynamic between me and and, and my mom, you know, um, 
Kia Ma Bess, who's who's so great and and so um she's so yeah. great. She's she's the best. She's the best. And yeah. I mean, I, I remember that 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 was actually what was used as like one of the like little yeah, teasers fairly. that for and yeah. and it was perfect because it just in it, I think it I can only speak for myself and my friends. It endeared. Um, the audience to the characters right away and just like a very short and then also like something that for people who come from those cultures um, could identify right away what was happening and like what kind of show it was going to be which was you know and you know and and I'll say I'll say one more thing about that scene um, is that that's really fun to me is that like part of when I was pitching I was just talking to the Hulu guys about how much stand-up I had done at mosques and I was just kind of talking about like, okay, I do stand up at the mosque and then I do stand up at the Laugh Factory. And it's like at the mosque, they don't want to hear about sex. And at the Laugh Factory, they don't want to hear about religion. And, and so it's like this back and forth. And I was like, that's kind of part of what I want to do in this show is that like everyone can kind of get into something that's maybe a little bit uncomfortable for them. But that opening scene with the like, you know, can I get your father's number? All that. It was, it was like one of the first jokes that I had ever written for a mosque show. And I was like racking my brain on how to open the show. And it was so funny that like something I wrote for like a mosque fundraiser ended up opening this show and being like this trailer thing. And so it kind of just speaks to the DNA of the show of like, you know, that intimate audience and knowing that intimate audience can scale really well. So do you feel like you've been writing this show for like, a lot longer than you actually have been writing it because it sounds like you you know you've been pulling from your comedy bits your your stand-up from for many years is that yeah, safe to say when, when we say semi-autobiographical I mean it's like you know obviously a lot of the plot hasn't happened especially when we get into the second season but you know the the, the part that does feel the most autobiographical is the like to get real technical Muslim, it's like, it's the jihad of it. Like the, just in using the word jihad as struggle, you know, in its purest spiritual sense, that's all that word means. It just means struggle. And it's like the character struggle, this family struggle, that push and pull, that balance, trying to find that, which I do think, you know, we've talked about, you know, Rami trying to adhere to Ramadan is the same as someone waking up for a morning run and then ending their night at the Wendy's drive through with like 30, you know, fucking chicken right. nuggets. Like, it's like, it's that same, like, man, there's my higher self and man, there's my lower self. And, and really that part and writing to that comedically, that's something I'd been doing for a while before the show happened, which is why, you know, I think when we went in to pitch the show, um, it felt like a show already because it was like, this is, you know, this is something that I've been thinking about for a while. Um. I have so many questions. Okay, <laughs> we're just gonna plow along. Um, I'm. I want to turn talk a little bit about the character, the um, casting and characters. Yeah. So, when you set out to make the show, did you have like you know, an idea of who you wanted cast in it, in it and um, and how much did the casting inform? Like, for example, the decision to dedicate an episode to each um, yeah. character. Well, it is interesting the because caliber of the- there's all these like exclusivity things. And so, so we actually, when we started, we were kind of thinking like, okay, who could play my mom? And I actually never thought we could get Hiyama Best because she was on Succession. And it's like really hard to get someone who's on an HBO show to come over and do a show on another network. Right. She's like one of the stars of that show. And at the time it hadn't even come out yet, but we knew like, okay, we can't get her. So I went to Egypt for like three weeks and I went to, they had, a, a, it was the first international Guna film festival. Mm-hmm. And then I was in Cairo before the festival. And I went and I auditioned all these people trying to find who can play my parents. And we ended up not finding someone who felt right at the time. But what was really cool was like, all those tapes we ended up writing for those actors for when we went to go shoot in Cairo, which was awesome. Mm-hmm. So when we went to Cairo, we didn't even have to audition anyone because I'd been there for like three weeks, you know, um, yeah. a year and a half prior. And uh, we basically kind of asked Kian to do the pilot as a favor. And we were like, look, we have one scene in the pilot with the mom. Um, can we shoot it with you? And then if we get the show picked up, we'll just recast the role because it'll probably be really hard to get you, you know, because of HBO. And 
uh, it was really interesting because what ended up happening was at the time we had a different dad who wasn't Amr mm-hmm. Wekid and mm-hmm. we ended up being able to keep him, but we <laughs> lost our dad. And, and, yeah. and the dad at the time was played by um, Waleed uh, Zuader, who, who, who is in the second season in the Uncle Nassim episode, he plays Nassim's like former lover. Right. So he, he, he was, you know, our, our kind of OG dad in the pilot, but we lost him to a, a conflict. But everything works out like the way that it should because Amr wasn't available the first time and he's like an Egyptian legend. Like it all, it all works out in a really cool way. But I think when we saw what we had in the pilot, um, when we saw how great May was as Dina, when we saw how amazing Kiam was as, you know, my mom, um, we got really excited uh, about, you know, I think part of what I talked a lot with Ari and Ryan was, we don't want to get bogged down in A story, B story, C story in the way that a lot of TV shows do, where you never really get to know anybody. So we were like, okay, well, if we want to get to know somebody, let's just like really spend time with them in a focused way. And so seeing our actors, having that philosophy, um, it made it really exciting to, to, to dig into them. And, and so it totally influenced it. And a lot of the cast too are like, people I've known for years. I mean, like Mo and Dave who plays Ahmed and mm-hmm. Steve, May who plays my sister. Um, we've all been friends for a really long time. And I think that that shows on screen. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's really easy chemistry. Um, so then Herschela c- joins season yeah. two. And d- how does that impact the trajectory of the show, the story? I mean, Billy, I, you remember we had this whole pitch out of basically a different second season. And then yeah. you know, we yeah, it was me, Ron Gotti, <laughs> who works with me at Hulu, got an incoming email from Mahershala's agent who basically said he's a huge fan of Rami and the show. He wants to be in it. And this is like, you know, still a fairly up and coming show at this point. And uh it was pretty awesome to get that email being like, okay, you know, Academy, double Academy award winning actor wants to star in the show. And then we, we quickly connected with Rami and it was like, you had to completely rewrite the show. <laughs> well, well, it was, it was, we, it was cool because it, it was this thing of like, I had an idea that I wanted my character to follow a shape, but the truth is I wanted it to be the third season of the show. Mm-hmm. And then Mahershala, kind of came along and we were figuring out something with him in the original storyline that we had for the second season. And then we were like, wait, you know, and, and it was Ryan, my co-creator who pointed this out. Like he, I just, I remember where I was, I was like, I was driving somewhere and, 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 and he's like, Hey man, you know, how we've been thinking about like, what could be a good role for Mahershala? Like you have that idea about following a shape. Like if you're going to get someone, if we're going to get someone that cool, like, shouldn't that be Mahershala? And then we were like, oh yeah. And, and then actually this was like a Hulu thing, which was so funny where it was like, Hey, can we have, like, if we're going to have someone as dope as Mahershala, can he be in, in, in one of the first three episodes just so like the audience knows that he's in the show. And it was like these two things kind of colliding. And then we were like, Oh, why are we even saving this thing that I really want to do? It's like, why don't we just do it? And, 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 and then it like really coalesced. And so at the time we had been in the writer's room for probably a little over a month. And then we just reconceived the season. I mean, there were a lot of pieces that stayed the same, but a lot that really shifted. And um, I'm so grateful for it. I mean, it, it, and, and my first conversation with Mahershala was just awesome. Cause he was like, he was like, you know, man, I was talking to my agent uh, and I was telling him you know, he was like, oh, is Ramadan over yet? And I was telling him, oh, well, you know, I'm not sure which day it's going to be. Because, And he's like, and then my agent cut me off and he was like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because some people end with the Saudis and some people end locally. And he was like, how do you know that? And he was like, oh, I saw it on Rami. And he was just like, you know, <laughs> he was just like, that was just this moment for him where he was like, man, I've been in Hollywood for 20 years <laughs> and right. half of it, no one's wanted me to be Muslim. Now my agent knows the intricacies of Ramadan. Um, you know, a just, new just day. Tell you, thank you. And like, <laughs> let me know if you need anything, you know? Seriously. Wow. It's such different times now. And speaking of um, Ramadan Mubarak, we're having that yeah. debate right now, trying to figure out if it's going to I'm starting Tuesday. I'm starting Tuesday too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. Billy's that's starting idea. tomorrow, but I'm, I'm yeah. starting. <laughs> that's what Billy doesn't want to talk about. Is throughout even the though, like, I can't even, has I'm Jewish, so I can't, I can never, Billy has accepted I can't even do Islam that. 
Admit it, Billy. Come on. <laughs> All right, I'm in. <laughs> oh God, good luck. Um, so I so let's talk a little bit about the writers' room um, mm-hmm. because with such a diverse uh, range of point of view, and it's your show, and you know, I'm just curious to know, like, what were you considering when you staffed the room, and um, and also like, how did you run the room? And Billy, were you ever in the room? Um, and yeah no I, I we kind of like we'll we'll stop by like once or twice during the the writers room process and hang with Rami and help us in but we kind of let them do their thing yeah it's really cool I mean we we've had a couple of different configurations I mean I think we had a smaller room the first season and we had Bridget and then second season Bridget moved on and then we, we actually had a little bit of a bigger room we weren't really sure actually going into the second season how we wanted to do it because we had found kind of a flow that organically kind of, or, 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 you know, came out of the first season, which was like, I realized I really like breaking story with a group of people. And then I like going off writing the outline myself mm-hmm. and then mm-hmm. bringing it back and us pitching on it. And then, you know, that, that became our process. And so going into the second season, there was part of me that was like, well, how do I want to break and how do I want to write? And then we kind of, landed on what's really been carrying us into the third season too, which is like, it's a really dope, diverse group of people. We have um, some who are traditional TV, some who are not. uh, And we talk just about everything. I come in with ideas of like, hey, I tried this on stage or, I mean, during the pandemic, it's been fun. We're doing on Zoom and I'm like, it's kind of like doing stand up to like people who I really like, but you know, hey, I was thinking about this bit and and how do we put this in and and how do we do this and, and, you know, and, and, and so uh, it's this really fun process of like getting together different voices. Um, something that's happened this year because of the pandemic that I love that I hope we don't lose is, you know, we've been able to hire um, a writer from Egypt and a writer from London just because yeah. we don't, we're not all in the same room. Right. And so that's really cool. And, and, and that to me um, just opens up possibilities as we're kind of um, looking at how do we get different voices? How do we do disability inclusion, you know, for people who might've had like a problem to get somewhere every day. Uh, so those are all things that we're kind of looking at as we're building the room together. And, um, and it's been really fun kind of just like getting that recipe right. Right. And then were there, are there like any interesting sort of like debates or conversation? Cause I imagine that when you're talking about something as personal as faith, and everybody sort of has a, a very different outlook on it and different way of like practicing it. Um, yeah. And I'm assuming there were like m- more than one Muslim in the room. Um, oh yeah. I mean, yeah. It's, like, it's, it's really interesting this season. It's like, cause we have a spectrum. Like we have like um, one person is a Muslim who's like super feminist and, 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 and grew up with a grandpa who had uh, two wives and, and hates mm. the idea completely. We have one person in our room who is a Muslim who has two wives. We have a gay Muslim uh, uh, person who, who's in the room. We have, you know, uh, like this wide spectrum, you know, like someone who's just culturally and then we have someone who's Jewish and then we have, you know, someone who's Greek and like, it, it's this like really interesting, like, you know, everything's personal, you know? So, so it's not, we're not, we're rarely talking about something that's in the abstract. It's kind of like, no, no, no. It's like, it's here. Like we're, we are experiencing it and we're having those conversations. And so it, it, it's, it's a really, um, it's really fun and it never gets like heated or anything because we're all kind of like, you know, into, it, it gets animated. It doesn't get heated. It's because, it, right. because everyone's just kind of, we share a vision of like, you know, we're trying to make philosophically gray arguments, mm-hmm. you know, the show, is rarely kind of saying, you know, do this, you know, it's, it's more like, let's watch these characters, um, again, you know, struggle with that higher self, lower self. So it's never about who's right. It's more like, how accurate is that higher self, lower self battle? Um, Because the more accurate it is, the more represented, whatever that might mean to somebody that they'll feel, I think the most important representation is emotional representation. It's not like, you know, 
it, it's less like census demographics. It's more like, are you showing what a particular, you know, um, feeling is and a struggle is. And so zoning in on that is really fun with, with a room that gets that that's the goal. And so um, we, yeah, we, it's, it's fun. Yeah, no, it sounds, I mean, this, especially with the second season with the, like the Khaliji, um, Golfy yeah. Arab episode, and then the Uncle Nassim episode. I mean, I, I, I think it was really smart how you guys were able to sort of um, cover such a broad range of like Muslim um, and Arab perspectives. Yeah. Um, and I think a lot of people felt seen. Um, really in, cool in different communities. Um, and just like on that note, the Uncle Nassim episode has to be like one of my favorite ones. It was just so like, like everyone has a story and that's, you know, you built them up to be like, it was, it was like a very um, gratifying, you know, sort of like payoff the way you sort of like reveal his truth um, in the second season. So. Bravo, bravo to you guys for that. Um, Billy, I wanted to ask you, at what point did you realize that you guys had an award-winning series? Um, that's a good question. I uh, don't- we won the award, the January- <laughs> Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> January 6, 2020. <laughs> I saw Rami coming up there. Uh, <laughs> look, I mean, I think, you never really go into these things being like, this show is going to go win an award. I think you go into it being like, this show is special. And I think, I don't know. I think that that somehow that translates into awards in some ways. Um, but I think we kind of knew it maybe had a shot at like some nominations. Um, I mean, we kind of, we got snubbed from the Emmys, right? The first year, right? Yeah. There was no it came out and then the Emmys didn't really get it. And then the Golden Globes picked it up. And so, I mean, I think we we were ready to make season two without ever getting award recognition. So it's like, I think, I don't know, it, it's it's in other people's hands. You never know. Right. Um, I think you just go out and try to make the best shows you can, you can make. Well, it's also too, like, even if you look at something like Schitt's Creek, but even if you just historically look at comedies, mm -hmm. it's... It, they usually pick up steam around the third season in terms of people even knowing that they're out there in terms of them finding their own voice. Like comedies kind of tend to need like three to six seasons to just do their thing. And so it's like, yeah, it's like Schitt's Creek's a great example. It's like no one even knew it was happening for four seasons. And then it's and like- for you to win after season one is pretty incredible. Exactly. Like I, I actually yeah. thought it was kind of a mere, I, I had no expectations um, about any of that. I was just happy that, my parents liked it, you know, like that, that was kind of my barometer, which was like, you know, uh, like to what level are they going to be upset? And it was really um, surprising, but, but, you know, everything else that's kind of come after is, is just, um, you know, but, but we, we had some, yeah, the Globes was great, Peabody's, all that, like we definitely didn't expect it. So it's really, really cool. Um, yeah. Congratulations um, to both of you guys on, on all those awards. Um, I, we're, we need to get to audience questions in a minute, but before we do that, I just, if it, I, I think it's important, Billy. Um, mm -hmm. We have, you know, a lot of students um, tuning in right now, and it would be great if you can share um, just some like non like non-traditional advice sure. that you would give to people who are listening. Yeah, it's been, it's funny. I've been. Um, this semester is for the first time I've been teaching a class with one of my friends who's a manager uh, at USC. We were teaching a, uh, a class of the Stark program, the graduate program. And so I've, I've been an adjunct professor. And, and the cool thing about it was we've had a lot of guests come on and we have them tell their stories, a lot of like how they became successful, things that they've done to like make their own way. And I think the common theme that I keep hearing and that people keep talking about is just develop your taste, develop what you like, what movies do you like, what shows do you like, what comedians do you like, what YouTube videos do you like, whatever it is, like just create, be passionate about the thing that you're in and have a real point of view and a taste so that 
when you are talking to anybody in this business, you're like, you sound informed and you have something to contribute. And in every conversation, you can talk about something and, and have a real uh, angle on, on whatever that topic is. And I think that that is creating your own, creating your own kind of canon essentially is, is really important. And I think it will serve you well in every creative conversation and decision you have for your career. Right. Uh, Rami, what do you have? What do you got? <laughs> I mean, well, it's, it's, it is really important to kind of just like, yeah, pay attention to what are you gravitating towards and, and um, you don't need to know all the answers you know, I, I, I've always felt like I, I never wanted to be quick to brand myself as anything in particular. Like, I never wanted to be like, you know, rush to say, you know, I'm into dark comedy or I'm into this or I'm into that. It's more like, well, I'm into a lot of things, but it's like what starts to be like the common thing that you really like. And, and, and I think part of putting that together is finding little pieces of things that you enjoy and, and what's the through line. And so it's almost like, I think on any level of this, the best artists and I think the best executives and I think the best producers are just really good investigators. Like, and I think that they're investigating themselves and I think that they're investigating what it is that they're gravitating towards and, and then kind of using that info to, you know, make things and, 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 point things in the direction of what they should be because you can't use like a blanket approach to every artist you can't use a blanket approach to every show but you can use like your investigative tools uh in, in a way like and and you know so so finding the ways in which you investigate I think are really important and and then you just start finding like interesting things I mean like I I didn't know what I wanted to make right away but I did realize I was like oh man like I really love Tarantino, Coen Brother movies and those worlds. And I really love Apatow films. <laughs> and, and I was like, you know what I really want to see is like a, like a Tarantino, like Coen Brothers, the whole world slanted, right? Like every character is weird. Like you don't really relate to anybody, but you're just kind of watching it. And you're like, this is fucking weird. And in Apatow, like you relate to everybody in that movie. Mm -hmm. And then at a certain point, I was like, I want to take like an Apatow guy that you relate to and throw him in this weird Tarantino Coen Brothers world. And then mm -hmm. I started to daydream, like, what does it look like to do that? What does it look like to put somebody undecided and surround them with a bunch of decided people and and in, and in a way there's some of that dna in rami like whenever we follow a character you know it's like rami you're you're following him you're sympathizing with him but then once you follow his mom rami looks kind of slanted right like he looks kind of like you know 2d because you're so in her perspective and, right. and all of a sudden he seems decided even though when we were with him like an episode or two ago we were in his insecurities and in his relatability and so but that that like yeah i didn't know that out the box it took me like a while to kind of figure out like why am I responding the way that I am? And so I just think like the more that you can be thoughtful with yourself and, and with whoever you're working with and just like genuinely curious, like it, it becomes really, um, you know, a, lo a lot more fun. Yeah. And I just want to note that like hearing you guys talk, there is like an incredible amount of trust um, that is not just flowing between the two of you guys, but just within your own uh, um just like having faith in your own like voice and your own visions. Um, and I think that that's, that's also an important piece of advice um, to, to, that I'm, I'm picking up from both of you guys is that like you, you do the work, you hone your vision, you know yourself, you know what you like, you pay attention and then you trust and you sort of move forward with that. And in this case, it paid off tremendously. Um, my last question for Billy before uh, we turn to the audience is that I, I'm just curious, what has Hulu learned from getting behind Rami and how has that impacted, you know, your, your future programming? Sure. I mean, you know, there's a challenge, but like a big reward in betting on new and undiscovered voices, you know, whether it's Rami or Anna Conkle or Maya Erskine on Pen15 or Eddie Bryan on Shrill. I think they're all examples of shows where we bet on someone who hadn't had a show before. And, you know, it's been really rewarding to see those shows be successful, to have those shows be on top 10 lists and to get award recognition. And, you know, now we have 
big name stars who are coming to us being like, I love your shows. Can I work? You know, like I'd love for my show to be at Hulu and, and to be able to educate the world on these new voices and, and kind of help them achieve their, their dreams and success and, and recognition has been awesome. I mean, we have an amazing PR team too. Uh, especially like, I want to give a shout out to Yaz who works on this show, who puts her, her heart into, Yaz into is getting the show out. Yeah, this is yeah. legendary. She's amazing. <laughs> but it's, you know, it's, you know, so these shows take risks. I think we take some risks in making them, but they don't feel like risk because you really believe in the show. And, you know, it's now created an environment of it's like a destination where people want to come to work at Hulu, which has been really exciting. And, you know, it's been a thrill even in this festival to have a whole day dedicated to the shows that we work on um, is pretty awesome. So you know, and for Rami, I mean, I think Rami is intrinsically linked to Hulu in a ways that we're thrilled about, you know, I mean, I think when we think about our comedy brand, it's in many ways similar to like Donald Glover at FX or Phoebe Waller-Bridge at Amazon or Larry David at HBO, you know, Rami is to Hulu. So I think it's, you know, we, we love that you're part of the comedy brand and, and you're, you'll always be like the, the patron saint of it. Come on, man. We changed the logo together. <laughs> hey, that is true. Rami, uh, <laughs> his, his real impact uh, is, is uh, he's a marketing exec as well. <laughs> we, there's this, uh, this thing that comes, that there, it's kind of hard to explain, but in, our show debuted like the Hulu opening that is kind of this like green Hulu letters on black in like right. the-, the, the, the They like bounce the around and then they come together. Yeah, right. it used to be this whole other thing. And, and, and it used to be this big white thing that, that I thought looked like, um, like Windows 97. And so <laughs> um, when we were making our show, we would get notes and I would say, awesome. And then I would like say, hey, so when are we changing the, the thing? Cause I'm not gonna like work on this for two years. <laughs> Windows 97 thing. And they stuck to their word. And, and they listened. Like, our show premiered with the, with that with that hulu animatic so it's, uh, i don't know if it would ever have gotten done without rami honestly I, he, he went awesome. to the top he's like who do i need to call and he <laughs> called that person and he made it happen i remember there was a point where i was at hulu for something and i left like two sticky notes i think i was on like kelly campbell's desk and maybe like beatrice's desk just being like hey any update on the <laughs> animatic like just trying to make sure that it was gonna happen it was very fun. that's amazing you left your mark we did it uh, <laughs> okay so i'm gonna um turn to some questions we have a question from alina lewis um being that the show is about self-reflection, do you feel like you were writing about your own journey of self-discovery or was it something you were writing as you were going through it? Um, it, it there's, there's kind of like, it's like I'm just far enough into, into it to be able to look back and reflect, but not quite out of it, you know? Like I yeah. think that's a lot of what this character is, which is like, I've, I've experienced enough to identify some of the problems of this character. And, and I always kind of daydream that this character is like, you know, I think you can make a TV show and make like a heroic version of yourself, or you can make a version that uh, uh, this character, and I don't think this character is an anti-hero or a villain or anything like that at all, but it's more like, what would I look like if I wasn't a comedian who had a TV show, you know? What would it look like to not have, um, honed in on on purpose in the way that I've been so fortunate to because I, I don't think that that's something that everyone is able to to, to find uh, I think everyone has a purpose but I don't know that everyone is afforded the ability to get in touch with it and so this this character is very much like you know just what if I went left in that fork of life and and so um so I'm definitely speaking about stuff that feels real but at the same time it feels like I have enough distance to be able to actually um Right. you know right to it for, from a place that 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 could do it justice right um okay and then we have a question from sam malari how do you assemble your team of producers and supporters as you were how did you assemble your team of producers and supporters as you were building your career before you ever started pitching the show um, well, it was, it was just, you know, I was very, very fortunate to just find, you know, people who really gravitated towards my standup. I mean, like, as Billy had mentioned, I was opening for Gerard at the time who had his show on NBC, 
the Carmichael show. And then um, I was, you know, Ari, uh, my co-creator who also co-created Gerard's show with him, you know, he, I went to my first stand up open mic in, in LA with Ari. And so like, some, sometimes it's really, it is just your friends, you know, and then, um, you know, you, you make something and it attracts people and then people who are attracted to it for the right reason can, can end up being really good collaborators. And so for me, that was stand up. It was like, you know, doing stand up in the way that I wanted to was attracting certain people into my life. And then we started working together. Cool. So we have time for like one or two more questions. Um, Munir Jabril asks, fellow Egyptian here, Rami, I'm a huge fan. As one of the only other Egyptians, shout out Rami Malik and Mina Masoud, uh, to make it big in Western media, do you feel a lot of pressure from your community to portray or represent us in a certain way? Or were you fully focused on authenticity? Um. Well, I, I, maybe neither. I mean, like it, it, I was fully focused on what was interesting to me. And so I think it's like on a level, do I feel the pressure? Yes. Do I make based on that pressure? No, <laughs> you know, it's, 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 it's more like, you know, I understand that there's a built-in pressure because of, yeah, you just listed three names, right? It's there's, there's scarcity on a level. Right. And, and I do think even if we get wider um, and this isn't even something that Hulu has done, there's just like a marketing press vibe that will happen. Like I remember when the show got announced that it was going to be made, there was an article that was like, Muslims, here's your comedy show, you know? And, and it's like, it's kind of, that's kind of wild. Right. Cause it's like, it's not really about Muslims. It's a, it's about, you know, this dude who lives in New Jersey who jerks off too much, who's Muslim. And so it's like, there are a lot of things that come before that. And so I, I think that, um, you know, I, that that's what I've wanted to be authentic to is kind of like, what am I into and what am I excited to create and what am I excited to make? And um, because the show is not educational. So um yeah, so pressure felt, but not um, that you got to you got to take that out. You know, you, you just got to deal with the normal pressure of like making something that is worth people's time to watch. I mean, that, that's probably what I operated the most from. It's like there's 500 shows on TV. Like we better be doing something that's like worth watching. Right. And, and if I could just say from like somebody who has been working on these sort of like representation issues in the community for like upwards of you know, 15 years now. I, I remember the days when there was like a lot of conversation about doing the Muslim Cosby show, Muslim Cosby show, who's going to have the Muslim Cosby show. And then people would write these pilots and often they like, you know, I'd, I'd get a look at them and I would think, oh, this is really like, this could work, you know, this is palatable. And then I remember talking with you about Rami and thinking, this is it. Like he's cutting the line and he's like, he's like, you know, disregarding this whole Muslim Co um, Cosby show thing and just saying like, no, actually I'm going to write my show from a place of honesty that does not, you know, portray the model minority, you know, image that we're, you know, being told like, you know, co covertly or, or overtly that we need to, you know, portray and I think what that did really and truly Rami like it's given people artists permission it's given other Muslim and Arab and people of other faiths as well permission to be as honest and and like you said not feel like you know we're coming from a place of scarcity so I've got to get it right I have to speak on everybody, um, you know, for, to everybody's point of view, because that's just like, at the end of the day, you know this, that would just create a bad show. Right, so, even to try yeah. to protect, right? So even to make something to protect a group or something at a certain point, it's like, well, what is this? Is this like propaganda? You know, like, right. like you have to be like really careful with with kind of what, what you know, you, you really just have to make the thing that you wanna make. And I, and I think even at that point, like there is no Cosby show anymore. 
You know, like nothing can be the Cosby show because right. that was an era of television where there were a limited amount of channels and the country watched what was on. Now we live in a time where you can choose your facts. Like, you know, and we just saw it, half the country didn't believe in masks, right? And they had a bunch of media that supported that thought because that's what they went to. So people go to what they want now. There's no more Cosby. There's no more making someone look like something in order to reach across the aisle. I mean, and, 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 you know, there's a lot of conversations happening right now over a show that's trying to do that. And, 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 and I think that the, the attempt is noble, but I think the reality of it is like, we're, we're, got, it's, it's over. It passed. We're past that. Like, we're past it. Like people are going to what they want to be more interested about. And so, you know, the job has changed, you know, it's not, we're, we're, we're the job is to just make the most, um, specific but universal thing so that you know you, you can really kind of just have more fun I think in this version of it yeah and you know um, again uh, there's credit that needs to be acknowledged that both of you you know had a hand and sort of like you know paving that path and moving forward I'm really excited to see what Hulu has um, has on its comedy slate and um, we are totally out of time so I just want to thank both of you for um, you know, spending your time with us and answering, you know, all these questions and sharing so honestly and transparently. We really appreciate it. Thanks, Tina. Um, we really appreciate it too. Great questions. Thank you. So, so I, I'm sorry to burst in here right at the end, but this is this has been incredible. Dina, this was an amazing job. Thank you so much for hosting this. Thank Billy you. and Rami, this was such an amazing way for us to end our festival. We want to bring everyone that's still on board um, from the festival to turn on their their cameras just so that we can all say a collective good night and hope. This is the end of the festival. This is it. Close it out. Close the festival. Yep. Holy shit! Um, so thank you all so much. We hope you guys will come to campus, Billy. Obviously, uh, we'll hopefully see you sooner than later um, with uh, with more classes you may be teaching and. Uh, yeah, Rami, you got to come join us on campus at some point when you make Oh, it. man, I would love, oh, that'd be great. If you guys want to give me a degree that I could give my grandpa, that'd be awesome. <laughs> uh, to just discuss amongst yourselves, I'm in. We'll be talking. We're, writing it, so out as, we're writing it out as we speak. Help me, David, help me. <laughs> it was great panel. Great way to end the festival. Billy, thank you, Billy. Great. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Thanks Thank so you much. everyone for coming this week. It was great. It's great. Thank you, Dean. Thank you. Thanks, David. Good night. Talk to you Good, soon. Night. Good night, everyone. Good night.